You know, call me crazy, but for some reason I feel really good about Arkansas winning tonight against Tennessee. I'm sure that won't come back to haunt me or bite me whatsoever. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Tuesday as uh, Arkansas basketball is getting ready to take on Tennessee, which is going to be a very important game for both of these teams. It's really hard to you know, feel uh, one way or the other about where these teams are actually going to go in postseason play and uh, you know, what's going to be uh, their destination or their destiny when it comes to uh, where they end up. But still, uh, this is a game where I've talked to a lot of different people from Tennessee side, to Arkansas side, even the National College basketball side. And nobody really knows what to expect. Nobody really knows what's going to happen. But what we do know is that both these teams are in desperate need of this game. Tennessee is trying to find a way to possibly get into that third seed in the SEC tournament and also continuing to try to build their resume when it comes to uh, their overall record. They're 21 and 8, 10 and 6 in conference play. Arkansas is just two games behind Tennessee. And there could be a realistic thing that if Arkansas finishes out 2 and 0 and Tennessee goes 0 and 2, which they have Arkansas at home and then at Auburn, it is possible, then Arkansas could actually pass Tennessee. So lots of things that are actually riding on this game as Arkansas sits at eighth in the SEC. And uh, just with three teams in front of them at nine and seven problem with Arkansas, at least problem for Arkansas is that Auburn and Vanderbilt are two of those teams at nine and seven, two teams that hold the tiebreaker over you. The other one being Missouri, which you won once and you've lost once. So you still got some work to try to get after it and try to make work. But uh, overall, it, it's just it's a weird game because, I, again, I feel confident. I really don't know how to describe it other than that. I just feel confident about this game. I wish I could sit here and tell you why it's it's because of X, Y, Z. Uh, I wish I could sit here and tell you that you know I'm just crazy and I don't really know what I'm talking about and just don't listen to me whatsoever. But overall, I just I like Arkansas's chances. And I started looking at kind of the numbers, which you know, numbers doesn't tell every bit of the story, but it certainly does tell a big part of it. And for Arkansas and Tennessee, and uh, checking it out on uh, hogsports.com, which of course Curtis Wilkerson does a great job of breaking it all down and looking at the tail of the tape, as he likes to call it. Uh, so I encourage you all to check it out there too. But I always like looking at the rankings in comparison when it comes to offense, when it comes to defense, when it comes to net rankings and, and other rankings there too, just to really get an idea of where these teams sit. And at this point in time in the season, it's going to be pretty accurate and because there's no like, oh, well, we got to wait and see. Well, there's only two regular season games left for both of these teams. So we pretty much kind of have an idea of who they are, what they're doing, and uh, where they stand as far as the national landscape of college basketball, and especially in the SEC side of things there too. But starting with the offensive side of the ball, uh, the offensive efficiency is actually pretty even for these teams, where Tennessee is number six in the SEC and Arkansas is number seven. So pretty much a dead even there. But the one thing that people fail to realize is Arkansas actually has the best field goal percentage on the season in the SEC, and they're 22nd in the country in field goal percentage. Now, a lot of you would probably not guess that, or think that that would be the case, but it's true. Arkansas has done such a good job of maybe not always shooting the three, but certainly going inside, getting dunks, getting layups, and getting good uh, getting good elbow jumpers and shots inside the perimeter. They've done a really good job of it. And so Arkansas is actually better at that than uh, what people even give it credit for. Now, uh, Tennessee does have the better turnover percentage when it comes to uh, not turning the ball over as much. Tennessee's off, off, uh, also a better offensive rebounding team than what Arkansas is. Now, this is what's the fascinating thing and why I feel like this could really be something that plays into Arkansas's hands very well, especially defensively. There's been times this year, especially earlier part of the SEC, where Arkansas has fouled way too much. We know that. But it's gotten better. There's still fouls. It still happens. But Arkansas has improved on it. And when teams are able to get to the free throw line effectively against Arkansas and make their free throws and even make them at a higher clip than what Arkansas is making them at, that has cost them in some of these games. You could even say that that cost them against Alabama, where Alabama essentially made almost all their free throws and Arkansas missed nine of them. I think Alabama ended up making, uh, um, or only missing just a, just a few. So 
there could be just a you know a lot of different angles from that that you could probably take as far as uh you know what to think of how many games it actually played into that perspective. But the thing is, is that Tennessee is actually the worst team in the SEC at getting to the free throw line, which without a doubt means that they're going to get to the free throw line like 38 million times this game. I mean, that's just kind of the way it goes uh, for Arkansas athletics. But I look at this and I'm like, okay, that is a huge advantage for Arkansas. I think Arkansas plays really well defensively. I think that they've done a really good job, especially keeping everything from the inside. And I think that given the circumstance that Tennessee is maybe not the most driving efficient team and able to get their baskets that way, or at least get to the free throw line that way, that's a benefit for Arkansas because it's something that if they can take that element away of it and Tennessee is not exactly the most effective offense when it comes to scoring in the sec either, that's that. There you go. That's something that could really help out Arkansas. Neither team is it, both teams are average at three point shooting. Um, both teams are not very great at free throw percentage. You know, Arkansas is one of the worst in the SEC, but Tennessee is at least uh, in the bottom half of it too. And as far as the tempo goes, Tennessee is not a very fast team. They're dead last in tempo when Arkansas is actually number two in this game. So if you want to look at, all right, offensively, what's it going to come down to for Arkansas to be able to win this game? It's going to be them getting to the free throw line a lot more and making those free throws, as well as getting the team, the game to speed up which Arkansas is very much capable of. If they can play to the tempo of Arkansas, that's going to be problematic for Tennessee because they do not play fast. They do not want to play fast. And if they have to get into a game where they're playing fast, Arkansas is going to eat them alive. So I, I like it from that perspective as far as the offense. And then the defense comes into play, which we know that it's always about, uh, you know, which team can have the, the bigger advantage in defense. Now, this is where Tennessee starts to get a few advantages, not all the advantages, but a few advantages. Uh, Tennessee is the second best team defensively as far as efficiency goes in the SEC. They're also uh, number two, best, second best in the SEC when it comes to field goal percentage for opponents. Arkansas is number six and number four. Not bad, but still Tennessee is slightly better. They're better. Tennessee's better at turnover percentage. Uh, two point defense is about the same. Tennessee's number two. Arkansas is number three. Three point defense. Tennessee's really good. They're number two in the SEC. Arkansas is number seven in the SEC. Which honestly, I thought they'd be lower, but I think the Alabama's three of twenty two probably helped that. This past weekend. Now, Arkansas is number one in blocked percentages in, in, in defense in the SEC. Tennessee's number two. So both of these teams are very much capable of blocking a lot of shots. Uh, steel percentages, Tennessee actually leads that. Number, they're number three in the SEC compared to Arkansas at number five. Uh, offensive rebound percentage, Tennessee is at number two and Arkansas is at number seven. And that's talking about how many offensive rebounds you allow the other team to get. Tennessee does not allow many of them. Arkansas is about middle of the pack there, too. And then free throw rate defensively is that how many free throws you give up. Tennessee is number 11 and Arkansas is number 12. So that's important because Arkansas has not been very good against it, but very seldom have they gone up against teams that are also not very good at it either. So that's a great matchup. But the thing that's going to come into play more so than anything is who has more free throws. Well, Tennessee's free throw rate is not good. It's, it's again, dead last in the SEC. Arkansas is second in the SEC. So if Arkansas can just find a way to get to the free throw line effectively, make those free throws consistently, which I know is easier said than done. They've had times where uh, they've just missed it and ended up costing them in some of these games. But if they can get to the free throw line effectively, if they can make those free throws effectively and just keep Tennessee from getting after it and uh, getting to the free throw line very often, like the stats should show and the numbers do show, I think Arkansas wins, and that's why I feel so good about it. I think the matchup just really favors Arkansas in this whole thing. Now, we know that any given day, things can change, things can happen. You know, Tennessee can get hot from three point land, and, you know, they wouldn't be surprised if that was the case because that's just what happens in the times of Arkansas. But it's going to come down to this. For Arkansas offensively, yes, they have not been a great team this year as far as the numbers go. Yes, they've had their struggles and they've lost a few games to which. It's been just disgustingly upsetting and frustrating and how they would have been able to not only have nothing going offensively, but not be able to finish out games and close them out, uh, especially when they played so well. It's been frustrating. But over the past three games, Arkansas has been averaging 88 points per game in the SEC. That's against Florida, Georgia, and Alabama. 88 points per game in the last three games. I wonder what's been the difference. Hmm. Guess we'll have to talk about that on the other side. But the point is, is that Arkansas's offense is a new animal right now. 
They went on the road to Alabama. Alabama, who has one of the best defenses, not only in the SEC and in the country when it comes to giving up and scoring, and Arkansas scored 83 points against them. That's not an easy feat whatsoever. Tennessee is a really good defensive team, too. But what hinders Tennessee is their offense. They are not a very good offensive team. They do not score a ton of points in games. They do not have really a whole, like a strength when it comes to what they can do offensively. And so it's basically going to be about the unstoppable force meeting an unmovable object. Which defense is going to play better? If Arkansas is going, Arkansas's defense is good and they're going to go up against a Tennessee offense that has not been overly great. I like that matchup. But can Arkansas be able to continue on the streak of being able to score some of the highest point totals that they've had so far this year, especially with Nick Smith now really getting it going? Yeah, I think they can. I really do. The amount of weapons that Arkansas has is pretty frightening. And it's nothing disrespectful against Tennessee, but I just feel like with the matchup and given the circumstances, Arkansas should win this game. They should win this game tonight. I'm not saying they will, but they should. And because of that fact, I think that Nick Smith's going to go and get his because we know he's going to. I think Devo's been a lot more efficient coming off the bench. I think Anthony Black is also going to bounce back nicely. Uh, it's been a struggle for him, especially against that Alabama game. I think he's not going to allow that type of game to happen once again. I think he bounces back. I think Council continues to go to the rack and get to the free throw line. It's going to be important for him. And who knows, maybe even Jalen Graham, who I think has done such a much better job defensively and getting blocked shots and doing a better job rebounding. His offensive game is there. You just got to give him the opportunities to do so. So if those things happen, I don't. I just think Arkansas has too many offensive weapons to be able to go in this game and only score 62 points. Like, I, I just don't see that happening. Uh, you know, Arkansas, I mean, Tennessee's given up 56 points a game. 56 points a game. It's probably the reason why their tempo is so slow. <laughs> but I think Arkansas scores more than that. I think Arkansas gets to 80. I think Arkansas gets to 80 points. They beat Tennessee on the road, and they get that marquee, very much needed conference victory on the road against a top-tier team. And that gives them a whole lot of a momentum heading into that Kentucky game as well. So that's my prediction. I'm sure it won't come back to haunt me. I'm sure it won't come back to bite me. I'm sure no Tennessee fan will ever go and find this clip and plaster it all over the internets and on the social media, hammering me for it. Sure, none of that will happen. But, uh, you know, I guess we'll have to find out and talk about it uh, on tomorrow's podcast. Here's hoping. <laughs> I got to tell you, though, about Built Bar, though, folks, because we know that during this time of year, it's always so easy to get away from those New Year's resolutions, right? Two months into the new year, and maybe some of us have already started cheating a little bit. Well, Built Bar is still there. So Built Bar is still something that you can eat, that you can enjoy, that tastes amazing, that's low calorie, low in sugar, but high in protein, and it's covered in 100% chocolate, so it tastes amazing. So there's really no reason for you not to enjoy Built Bar, especially with the amount of different delicious flavors that they have to choose from. It's healthy, and it's tasty, and it's fast, and it's convenient. Like, what else could you possibly want when it comes to a candy bar or a protein bar or a built bar. Like it's all encompassing in the same. It tastes as good as a candy bar, but as healthy for you as a protein bar. If you don't believe me, try it out for yourself. Go to built.com, see all the different flavors that they have to choose from. I promise you, you won't be disappointed in any of the flavors. But if you're also at your local Walmart or Sam's Club, go over to the pharmacy section and you'll be able to see all the different variety packs that they have of the built bar as well that you can purchase, whether it's the four pack or the 13 pack. You got to check it out. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. So be sure to check out Built Bar at Built.com, as well as at your local Walmart and Sam's Club. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on to, into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, I want to give a shout out to Nick Smith, who has won the Freshman of the Week. Uh, this week in the SEC. So uh, huge for him. And is actually the second time that he's been named uh, SEC Freshman of the Week, which is so wild to think that uh, how little he has played this year in the regular season, that he's actually been able to put together back-to-back -back performances or at least a week performance worth of getting him to name SEC Player of the Week and as far as a freshman goes. I would like to see uh, as far as the product or how many games a player has played compared to like the ratio of how many games they played and how many times they've won SEC freshman of the week. Uh, Nick Smith might be pretty high and who knows with the performances that maybe he has against Tennessee and against Kentucky this week, maybe he wins it again next week. But uh, he had a really great performance as we know against, um, against Florida or excuse me, against Georgia as well as Tennessee. Uh, man, I'm getting all my games mixed up. Georgia and Alabama. 
There we go. Uh, did a really good job against both of them. He was averaging 24, uh, 25 points in those two games, three and a half rebounds, and uh, was pivotal in part of the big victory against Georgia and also pivotal in the part of Arkansas, nearly pulling off the upset and doing a, a great job as far as offense goes against the Alabama Crimson Tide. So I started looking at this, and I was like, okay, he deserves it. Like, I mean, he had, he had a great games, and without him, you're not even in those games. You're not blowing out Georgia. But he is a difference maker, and you can see every time he takes the court, which, again, I'm just thinking it's so funny how we don't hear from any of those people who are saying that Nick Smith is going to hurt the chemistry and hurt this team and be a bad like, insertion of his talents into what Arkansas has built. You don't hear that anymore. Huh. Wonder why. It's almost like someone was right about that. Not to toot my own horn, but I want to mention it anyways. But still, even though as Nick Smith won SEC Freshman of the Week, Let's be honest, he did win it because the SEC knew they couldn't give it to Brandon Miller. Because Brandon Miller had a, a really outstanding week, but they couldn't give it to him. So they gave it to Nick Smith. And again, he's deserving of it, so it's not like uh, they gave it to him by default. I mean, he had a great week, and uh, the fact that he was able to play so many minutes and be so impactful on the offensive side of the, of the ball uh, shows that he's still coming around. And I thought it was really well put by uh, I believe is the people that do uh, the field of 68 podcast, which is a really good podcast when it comes to all things, college basketball, uh, when they were putting it to, to that and started discussing it a little bit more in depth about Nick Smith, um, they, they said kind of, you know, he is so good right now, but you can tell that he's making freshman mistakes at this part of the year, which he normally wouldn't be making if he had been playing all year long. And I started thinking about that. I'm like, you know, that's actually a good way to put it because Nick Smith, I'm not saying he's playing poorly or that he's just screwing up all over the place. I'm not saying that at all, but there are things to where it's like, man, if he was able to play the whole year this year and the whole season this season, uh, I think at this point in time, not only because he's already going to be an NBA lottery pick, but at this time he would be just everybody would be tooting the horn of saying this kid is going to is the best player in the SEC. He might be one of the best players in the college basketball, uh, maybe in the running for SEC freshman of the year, maybe an SEC player of the year, whatever it may be. Uh, he would be at that level if he had gone along with it. But even in his rookie mistakes or his freshman mistakes or whatever you want to call it, he is still the bona fide best player on the court whenever he takes the court. Like tonight against Tennessee, Nick Smith is going to be the best basketball player on that court. And every time that Nick Smith has taken the court this year, he's been the best basketball player on the court. The only one that you could maybe make an argument for was with Brandon Miller against Alabama. But every other game, Nick Smith has been the best player on the court each and every time. Now think about how many times Arkansas has actually been able to say that in their college basketball program, even in the past you know, 15, 20 years. Not very often. I mean, there's been times where they've had some really great players, and there's been times where they have had players that, yes, were indeed the best players on the court. But when you're talking about each and every game, that hasn't been the case. Maybe Bobby Portis, you could have made an argument for him. Um, but those Kentucky teams that they faced were, were had a lot of good talent too. Again, the Brandon Miller situation might be it, but I think Nick Smith is the best player when he, every time he touches the court. And so having that type of player is just such a difference maker. You know, I think back to I'm not trying to throw total comparisons out there, but I think back to when, you know, Arkansas football and Darren McFadden, you know, Darren McFadden was the best football player every time he went onto that field, no matter who they went up against, he was the best player. And he proved it time and time again. I think Nick Smith is going to continue to prove time and time again, that he is the best basketball player on that court. He's going to do it again against Tennessee tonight. And I think he's going to do it against Kentucky and Bud Walton on Saturday. Is it going to lead to 2-0 and and two wins? Hopefully, but not necessarily has to in order for him to prove himself as being the best player. Like, what he did against Bama was incredible. What he did against George is incredible. And I think that tonight he's going to play 35-plus minutes, and he's going to be a huge factor in not only his offensive game, but opening up for everybody else. So it's just nice to have that and enjoy it while we can. And I just, again, can't say enough about Nick Smith, and I'm so glad that he's able to not only win freshman of the week, but continue to develop his game and, Hopefully uh, continues to get better and better each and every game because uh, they're going to need every bit of him to be able to advance into March and into the NCAA tournament. That is for sure. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about something that came up on SEC Network dealing with the Southern Hoops uh, series that are coming out. And they talking about Nolan Richardson and Arkansas basketball. I thought it was pretty fascinating. We'll talk about that on the other side of the break. So stay with us. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. 
Okay, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I, 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 don't, I don't want to call this like a bone to pick with the SEC Network, but it certainly was not something that I was expecting. So I, was, I thought it was pretty cool that the SEC Network, they're putting together this uh, thing of Southern Hoops, which is just kind of talking about these uh, the history of SEC basketball is how they put it. And so I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. And they've been kind of going through some eras and they've gone through, uh, you know, whether it's women's basketball or men's basketball and, uh, you know, everything to go along with it. I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool, pretty fun, pretty interesting. I uh, can't wait to see what happens because in part five, they were promoting the fact that it was going to be about the architect of 40 minutes of hell, which of course is Nolan Richardson. And so I turned it on and I was checking it out and it was not at all what I thought it would be. Uh, it started off with, you know, they kind of, the series is more like about years, each episode, like eras. And I think the era was actually from 1990 to 1998 or something like that. But they promoted it in the way that it was really going to be about just about Arkansas and about Nolan Richardson and all that. So when it started off, it was talking about uh, women's basketball and talking about Tennessee and versus Virginia and Pat Summon and all that. I was like, okay, well, maybe this is just kind of a, you know, continuation into the first episode or to from the last episode and then it'll stop and then go right into Arkansas. I was like, okay. And so it did for a little bit, but it talked about Arkansas joining the SEC and how impactful it was and how crazy it was that Kentucky, you know, thought that they were the crim de la crim, but then Arkansas goes over to Rupp and just blows them out. And so it really shocks some people. It's like, okay. But then after that, it kind of goes into some other stuff like Florida during that time when they were coming along and then Alabama too, when they beat Arkansas in the SEC tournament. And so I was like, what is this? Okay. So then it comes back to Arkansas and start talking about Nolan Richardson and, and then start talking about, you know, that getting ready for the 1994 national championship game and that season that was happening. It was all great. But then it just jumps again. <laughs> so I'm like, what are we doing here? <laughs> like, I thought this was going to be just about Arkansas and it clearly wasn't just about Arkansas. So again, maybe I just misconstrued it. Maybe I miss interpreted what the uh, show was going to be about, at least the episode, but I was waiting for more Arkansas stuff. And I mean, it was interesting. It's always cool to see Arkansas and get talked about, especially from that magical 1994 national championship season and all that, but it really didn't do anything differently and show anything differently from, at least from what I saw. And maybe somebody saw something different. Maybe that's something that you saw that you hadn't didn't know or didn't realize or some cool little clip or whatnot. But anyways, I was just really disappointed with how it was. But the point is, is like, and the reason I bring this up is because it is so awesome just to continue to see anytime highlights of that season or of that era of basketball, not because it's member berries where you're just trying to say, hey, you remember that time we went to the championship? I remember. Like, you don't want that necessarily. And it's not really about that necessarily. But it's just about a sense of time where it's like, not only did you win a national championship, which not many people have said, I mean, in the SEC, there's only, what, three teams that have won a national championship, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Kentucky, Florida, and Arkansas. I think are the only teams that have won national championships from the SEC, at least here in the modern era. So, you know, it's something to be proud of in that regard, but I think it's also really interesting for uh, purposes of just, you know, remembering how it was done, how there was a system in a, in, a, in a type of basketball that nobody had really seen before, nobody really knew what to do with, and it was fun and entertaining, and people enjoyed watching it. But... I always like appreciate that and cherish it. I mean, it was not that old. I just barely remember some parts of it. But it's just nice to always get talked about and to see Nolan Richardson get the all the uh, acclaim and the praise that he rightfully deserves and Arkansas to be a part of that. And uh, again, I just I love seeing anytime they talk about stuff from it. I'm always going to be watching. I'm always going to be interested. That's why I watch this and turn this episode on. But I mean, I don't know. I just was not very. I wouldn't say please, but I just was not. I was expecting a little bit more out of it. So if you haven't watched it yet, maybe you'll enjoy it. Maybe you'll like it. But I just wanted a little bit more Arkansas when it was promoted. The fact that it was going to be about Arkansas it was more about the era in which Arkansas was dominating and surrounding SEC stuff. I was just like, OK, well, we talk about Shaq and Dale Brown. It's like, OK, that's fine. But why are you promoting this as Arkansas? So, uh, again, that's just my opinion. Could be wrong. But either way, I felt like it should have been could have been a lot better than what it was. Appreciate everybody listening into Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. Keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.